Thank you, Tasha. So um, we had a wonderful presentation from Srinath on uh, what big data analytics is. And uh, we also had another interesting session on the use case, the particular use case of using the big data analytics. So on this uh, session, I'm going to basically cover on how we can deploy uh, the big data analytics in your organization and uh, how, you, the, how the agility of this and how you can grow with your data, uh, um, grow with your data, like the deployment can grow with your data. So uh, this is the uh, overview of a big data analytics platform we have real-time, interactive, predictive, and batch analytics. So that's fine. We all know about that. And when you're trying to deploy something in your organization, the main thing that comes into your mind is, OK, um, can it handle my load? I have a lot of data. Can it handle my load? How costly is it going to be? Agility, the adaptability. And OK, I'm buying this particular product. Is it only going to support its own stuff, or it, is, it can also adapt to third party uh, stuff. Can I monitor Tomcat? Can I monitor some web sphere? All the other stuff. Can I do that? So these are the potential problems that we that comes into our mind. So how do how are we going to start? So as an organization, as, as an architect, when you're thinking about the big data or when you're thinking about analytics, you're not just going to do a small part of it. You have to think big. Like we are going to analyze all our data in, internally to our organization customers, target market, and we are really going to analyze each and everything, and we're going to be you know, profitable, getting promotions, and it should be good. So, but when it comes to the deployment side of it, if we start very big, things, will, things can go very complicated. So we always should start very small, and then we have to grow with the data and with, grow with the analytics that we are going to do. So start simple. Eat your own dog food. Like do you? You might have some data out there, so you just take them and start playing with that, and you can eventually grow and analyze whatever the data you already have. So that's the key part of it. So the first step is finding data inside your organization. So when it comes to data, don't worry about the data formats. The data formats can be either JSON, XML, or even text messages. Don't really worry about the formats or where they are. Like it may be in. Uh, of MySQL storage or NoSQL storage, or it can even be in some log files. Don't really worry about that. And the platforms, maybe Java, .NET, whatnot, and the protocols that they use. So with WSO2 uh, Data Analytics Server, we have a unified data capturing platform so that it is independent of the data format and the sources. So we can actually use different type of adapters to the data analytics platform. We by default ship a lot so that you can get much data, all kind of data you want. So for example, if you have APIs like SOAP, REST, you can use our um, um, event receiver APIs for SOAP and uh, REST. Or else if there is a capability of pushing into some sort of a queue like Kafka, MQT, uh, MQTT, or JMS, we can use that also. But worst case, like if you have a legacy application, if you want to poll it and get some data, so you can even write some sort of a uh, mechanism using ESB to basically get data out of that. Apart from that, if you don't have any means, like it's a very old leg legacy application, at least it produces some logs. So we can basically go use our log publisher to read those logs and publish it to a server. So you can analyze them. So there are lots of ways of getting data. So you really don't need to worry about, OK, whether I can analyze that or this. So the second step is basically understand how things have been. Like, OK, how my organization is doing till now. So to do that, uh, the first most important thing is you should be able to search and see what's in your data. So that's basically the interactive analytics. So you can basically index all your data that you have. So you can a do a full uh, text data search. And also, you can do drill down search through our interactive capability. So this is uh, quite easy uh, with our interactive analytics uh, that we have. And with the batch processing capabilities, we can summarize the data that you already have, and you can get some output of that. And also, you can understand patterns and behaviors and how it has been. So with Spark, we do that. So to do this, we just need 
two nodes of no two nodes of dash so we can even use with one node but if you really want high availability just two nodes and we can since we are just starting we can start with mysql or, or an rdbms data source so that we really don't need to go for a very huge deployment so if you just want to analyze an esb or a data service or or some tomcats that you already have some services deployed you can just start simple with two nodes so this is how it looks like. So we have data agents uh, pushing data into that. So we have receivers, real-time components into that, Spark Analyzer, indexers, and dashboard. These are separate components within the data analytics server, which can be just you know two nodes running with a, with a shared database. Or the shared database can also be uh, mirrored uh, and clustered. So now we have an understanding of what's basically happening in our organization and we can analyze that and we know a deployment for that. So we have to keep informed like, okay, what is happening right now? Or oh, what are the potential problem is going to, going to happen? So in those cases, for information, we can use dashboards, alerts, and you can also like the users can also provide feedback loops. So all of these are done through the real-time processing component, which we call the WSO to CEP, which is also part of uh, DAS. So in this case, the high availability and zero downtime and zero data loss is something very critical because we are do doing doing stuff in real time, and if our real time server is going down, then we may not be able be able to identify and do alerts and that can be a problem. So in this case, we have our complex event processors, uh, high available deployment, so we can still use two nodes. Uh, but uh, rem I remind you that it gives you the one node throughput because we are going to do duplicated analytics on both the nodes. So both the nodes will be doing the same analytics. And if one node goes down, still the other can catch up. So you can even have n number of nodes, but the effective results is going to be just one node's performance. So this is for just for high available purposes. So this is this can do about um, um, about th uh, thousands of events per second based on the use case that you have. But that's that's m mostly okay for most use cases. So now we have the data, we have the real time and batch processed. So if we want to publish data outside, we can use our data um, publishing framework so that you can publish to dashboards, you can uh, invoke services, and also through ESB, we can call several and a lot of legacy applications that you really want to. So now we have the real time part into it. Now we know like what's happening right now and we have alerting capabilities. So we have to think ahead and you know, we should be able to predict how our business is going to be, the potential uh, issues that we may encounter, the opportunities and threats. So then at that point, we bring in the day, uh, machine learner product, which is like just one node. Like we really don't need to have a high available deployment. It's basically used as an analytics uh, core. Uh, 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 like uh, in, in the dev uh, level. So basically, like we have a, a day, uh, machine learner. So machine learner uses Spark to do its machine learning capabilities. So you can use with Spark, or else you can even use with the data uh, analytics server itself. And uh, at runtime, we can deploy the, the built models into ESB, CEP, or even data analytics server itself. So in those cases, even though we have a machine learning server, it is not going to really impact you at the um, uh, as, as a production instance because it's, 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 it is it is just there. You do some analytics periodically, and at the runtime, it is going to be deployed in either three of these uh, servers on real time. So, as a startup, if you really want to have a real time predictive machine learning capabilities. All you just need to have two nodes of DAS, which will help you to do all your deployment analytics, uh, and you can get started with that. OK, now we are expanding our business. Now you are going within, from within your organization to your third parties, and people are third parties are um, talking to you, and you are exposing your data to other people uh, or other organizations. At that point, we usually use uh, the um, API manager as the gateway between you and the external world. So through API manager, 
we have a lot and lots of other data analytics related information coming into our platform. For example, we can, like each different services is exposed as these different APIs. And based on who invoked those APIs, we can get some sort of a business idea or what kind of parameters are they basically using. Like we can extract the payloads, analyze the payloads and the request URLs. So basically by monetizing the APIs, we can get lots and lots of information about how good our business is doing and how people are interested, like what, what services they are interested in and what, um, what is our customer is real, really want about our data. So with our data analytics platform uh, already built in, just by adding an API manager, we have a very good idea of how our organization is performing as a whole. So that gives you a lot of uh, information. So after, like when you have API manager, you might, now you are, you are doing internal, you are processing data of your customers or partners. So now you have lots and lots of data within your organization. At this st step, you might sometimes need to scale your system to support more and more. So in that case, so how are we going to do, uh, how are we basically going to scale the real time and batch? So if it is real time, we can basically use Apache Storm to scale the real time part. Earlier I was said, okay, even if you have multiple CP nodes, it's just one node's performance. But when it comes to Apache Storm, you can basically scale it well, but uh, you will be only using Apache Storm if you have high memory requirement and if you or if you have very CPU intensive processing. Otherwise, just using a high minimum HA deployment is good for you. So this is the point where you decide, okay, I wanted to really scale real time. So you have to take a decision when to scale real real time. So this is uh, this is the this is the thing that you have to look to take that decision. And mind you, like we really don't need to have a query change. Like you might have done some analytics using the query language. So the same thing can be deployed on Storm with zero changes. So you really don't need to re-implement or rethink uh, the whole thing and we have to rewrite everything. So you, the same queries can be deployed on Storm. So, they, so even though on the architectural level there's, there's a change, like we are moving from a two-node deployment to a multi-node deployment, but it is not going to affect the business, like the logics and the analytics component that was written on top of it. And when it comes to batch, we, are mo we can move from RDBMS to HBase or Cassandra for scalable data storage and management. So in that case, we'll be um, removing the um, RD, uh, like we'll be basically simply adding the HBase and Cassandra and point Spark, uh, the Spark script to run on top of them. So here also, we, the scripts written on analytics, the Spark scripts written on analytics doesn't need to change because the DAS have a data abstraction layer which basically hides you what database that we are actually working on top of. So uh, the analytics side, the, 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 the logics and the um, things that you have already written on analytics, it's not going to change. So it's a seamless migration when it comes to analytics. So only some, there's some DevOps works uh, that we need to do to plug in different uh, stuff and add more, uh, what do you call, uh, nodes. So when it comes to real time, so what we basically do is the Siddhi core, which was now earlier in the event processor component, is now moved to Storm, so that we really don't need to do any code changes. And so this, for, for real time scaling, we might need to have a Apache Storm cluster plus n number of CEP nodes, basically for feeding and getting the data out of the storm stuff. So based on the data rate, we, we can scale the CP nodes as well. So when we look at the, the deployment of a scalable architecture, so you can see like we can scale, we can like explore the, expand the uh, data analytics server into many parts and we can scale each and every of them individually. For example, uh, so here we have a uh, fully scalable data analytics deployment. So it uses eight node deployment with Storm if you want to scale real time as well. So you can see uh, the receiver part is scaled by itself. That really means like if you have a lot of data coming in, 
So you can just scale the receivers. You really don't need to do other stuff. If you have only batch related information, like for example, you have lots of data you want to do like process periodically, in that case, we will just scale the Spark analyzer and we, don't, we can just scale that. We really don't need to scale the other stuff. If you have a lot, lot of um, interactive queries running, like a lot of people are uh, using interactive queries and searching it a lot, and if the data rate is also high, then we might need to use the indexer, scale the indexer to index much faster so that you can get a lot of, lots, lots of data uh, indexed fast so that you can search them. And if you have lots of users using dashboards, in that case, you can scale the dashboard. So based on the organization and the needs, you can scale your system on different ways. So there is no hard and fast rule like, OK, if you want to use you know, two receivers, five receivers, or if you have two receivers, there should be five uh, analyzers, something like that. There is no hard and fast rule like that. Based on the organization and the data need, so you can basically scale them individually so that it provides the agility for your organization to grow uh, the data analytics with, your, uh, with the data and the need. So now we have data coming into your system. And with IoT, we are moving more from like asking the customers to send data to sensing the world, the sensing the information. So here, we even you, uh, we have actually tried, and uh, we can use SIDDI, which is the WSO2 co um, part of CEP, within mobile phones and within sensors and sensor gateways to do some pre-processing at the sensor gateways and push them to to the centralized server for future analysis. So we have used this uh, technique in the IoT server and also with enterprise mobility management. So these stuff. We can do edge analytics as well. So this is also another deployment pattern. So you might need to write your agents in a way such that they can do some sort of a computation on the edge so that you get maximum out of it. So this, this way, we can reduce the network traffic, and we can get more meaningful information uh, into the server. So when it comes to data analytics uh, lifecycle, so what we basically do is we have lots of artifacts, like receivers, publishers, CP, like real-time queries, Spark um, uh, models, and lots of them. So what we basically do is we bundle all of them as CFs. Well, that is the deployment model used throughout the WSO2. All, all, all of them are bundled as CF. And that can be tested and migrated through the whole system, like from the dev to test prod to pre-prod. But when it comes to analytics, we can't do uh, like predefined analytics on all cases. Like there is still interactive analytics that you have to do on the production system itself. So you have to uh, do some like you can't do a predefined analytics there. So you j so there is some problem you want to investigate. Okay, th there is an error on this message. You want to see okay what is the error message? Which message caused this? Then search on them, find who's a user has done this, how often this error has occurred. So all of those are interactive analytics. So these you might do in production environment, which is not basically like predefined analysis. And personalized dashboard, this is also something provided with DIAS. So we can build your own dashboard from the data that you have. So each and every user have their own views. So the CEO might want to see, okay, I don't want this bar chart, I want this in a line chart. So he might want to create one. Uh, pretty fast. So those kind of capabilities are there. So those are changes that is done on production environment itself and customizing the alerts. So we have a way of templating the analytics. So basically, you can customize the results that is that you want to send it out. So like if the threshold is uh, 75, uh, I want to change the threshold from 75 to 80. So the CEO or somebody, uh, the business person can go and just do the tweaks, and it changes in the production environment. You really don't need to go through the whole life cycle. So as DevOps, we also need to know about that angle. So with um, data analytics, there is also a part where it's the, uh, we interact with the production environment directly and do certain changes there. So all the WSO2 uh, products are puppetized so with the data analytics server. So you really don't need to go through a cumbersome process of deploying cluster deployment. Uh, earlier, like you have to go through a documentation and find out all of those stuff. Now, it is you can go to the w, uh, GitHub slash WSO2 slash puppet modules and get all the servers 
puppetized. So uh, there's my instructions how to set up the servers through Puppet. So it is quite straightforward. So like with few clicks, you can do a distributed deployment and scale them accordingly uh, with WSO2 Puppet. And we are also in the process of implementing um, a Docker based images. So it is, it is Docker, it is containerized, but it's, as Sanjeeva said, it is not working like, like in the container. It's just not taking advantage of container, but you can simply start in containers and basically use the normal product. So with C5, it will be more containerized, but for now it's just running on top of containers. So in summary, uh, we start small, always start small and scale as you grow. So you don't start with a fully de uh, distributed deployment and make your life complicated. Uh, so you just need two nodes of data analytics to start with. A uh, fully distributed deployment can end up in 8, 10 plus nodes. So uh, you should know when you are scaling, like what aspect you are scaling and why you are scaling so that you can be more, much more productive and uh, uh, you can use the resources in an optimal manner. So the analyzer, indexer, receiver, real time component and the dashboard, they can be scaled separately. And use Puppet to manage your deployment, like don't try to go ahead and do it by yourself. With Puppet, it is quite easy for you to uh, migrate and, uh, and also scale your system pretty fast. So start analyzing the data today itself for a better tomorrow. So that's all I have. <laughs>